The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, you see it. We in the home of boxing. We on set True School Sports stand up. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire. You see me rocking the rocking the Sinisa Estrada shirt that she gave me many years ago after her eighth professional fight. Much love and respect to the lovely and equally talented Sinisa Estrada. Much love and respect to the very talented and ducked and avoided Philip Hergovic, you know, a, a friend of the channel for sure, someone that we're big supporters of here on True School Sports. Um, in a very interesting place in his career because, you know, Michael Hunter was supposed to fight him in an IBF eliminator. He didn't want no smoke. He would rather go play second fiddle to Jada Kiss and the Locks and Dipset and Jim Jones and all them um, and, and, and fight and, and, and be the second uh, lead attraction on, on the show then fight Philip Hugerbeck. You know, he wants to fight on these on these on these on these shows with these rappers rapping songs from ten years ago, but he don't want to fight in, in fights that could position him to become heavyweight champion. So we see where his focus is. He didn't want no smoke. Martin Bocoli, he was flapping his gums, talking a bunch of junk about how he'd fight Hergovic and his team was running the mouth about how they fight Hergovic, but when push came to shove, they didn't box, they didn't want to box Philip Hergovic. When Cal Sandlin pulled their card and said, Hey, we'll make the fight happen, they didn't want to make the fight happen. They started becoming accountants. And Martin Bacoli hasn't boxed the whole year. He would rather not box the whole year than fight Philip Hergovic. So he ducked him too. So I think it's fair to say that Philip Hergovic is very quickly becoming the most ducked and avoided heavyweight in boxing. And you can't refute it. You know, a lot of people go on about how Jared Anderson pushed Tyson Fury fight back because he knocked out Tyson Fury in sparring. Man, Philip Hergovic was doing that years ago when, when, when he beat up David Hay in sparring. And, and he was the reason that David Hay didn't fight Tyson Fury. You know, same thing goes for, you know, uh, Philip Hergovic when he was a 19-year-old kid punishing Deontay Wilder in sparring. You know, so people, listen, I say these things to say that People that are in boxing, that, 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 that are in these gyms, boxing is a very small world, and these heavyweights know how dangerous Philip Hergovic is. They know how formidable he is. They know what he can do to them if they dare step in the ring with him, and that's why they're very hesitant and reluctant to take the fight. But segueing to what's going on with El Animal now, one guy that isn't afraid to take the fight is Marco Radonik, all right? A, a heavyweight by the name of Marco Radonik, who I never heard of, but I, I took a quick glance at his box rec. 22-0. 22 knockouts, so he, you know he definitely he definitely looks and sounds like he's got a bunch of power. But when you look further into his 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 box rec, you know you can clearly see that um, he hasn't boxed anybody. You know of, of those 22 fights, only three of them have had only three of his opponents have have, have had winning records, and they're not any names that we would recognize as, as boxing fans. But this is what it's come to. This is what it's come to in the heavyweight division when these fighters don't want to fight Philip Hergovic. When they when they act like they want to fight Philip Hergovic, but they don't. Um, you know, you got to take these kind of fights. You know, and it's unfortunate because Hergovic hasn't fought since last November against um, Rydell Booker. Now he's fighting this guy in Austria. And he can't overlook him. Look, he can't overlook Marco Radonek because you can never ever look, overlook anybody in heavyweight boxing because there's always that, that one-punch factor. But... Look, man, he. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Michael Hunter thing, and then Martin Bacoli, and then you know, like, like let's just, let's just look at the top fifteen in in the I, in the uh, in the um, IBF. You know, you got Martin Bacoli who didn't want no smoke. You got Michael Hunter who didn't want smoke so much so to the point that he got removed from the rankings. Um, there's just very few options out there for him when you look at um, where he's at in his career, but. I really think he's going to be one of those fighters. You know, he's got to win this fight, obviously. But I think he's going to be one of those fighters that has to really position himself to become mandatory. Um, and, and it's getting to a point now where he can't get fights. These guys don't want to fight him. Their teams and their promoters and the people behind the other guys in the top 15, they have their own agendas. So they, they don't want to fight him for whatever the case may be. So if, if, it gets to the point where, if it gets to the point where he can't fight nobody in the top 15, then I, I, I think the IBF should just make Philip Hergovic the mandatory by default. Because if you can't... If you can't earn that shot in the ring because nobody wants to fight you, then you should just by default get the, get the spot. And then, you know, we'll see what he's made of. I, I personally think that when we talk about the, the next generation of heavyweights, this is a guy that I think has all the makings to become heavyweight champion. You know, I, I look at him and I see he looks like he could be the offspring of Vitaly Klitschko from the way he boxes to the way he moves to even the expressions on his face. You know, Philip Hergovic is a dangerous, dangerous, bad Bat, you know, a really, really dangerous fighter. Nobody's jumping up to fight him. So um, I'm, I'm just happy that he's back in the ring because 
one thing that's very, 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 one thing that's very underrated in boxing is just activity, activity. Because when when you have these long layoffs, whether it be a year, eight months, two years, whatever the case may be, the longer you're out the ring, the more that messes with your timing, the more that messes with uh, your timing. And that's the main thing a boxer doesn't want to lose or have um, lacking behind when he goes into a big fight is his timing. Because... You know, it's one thing to do it in the gym, and it's one thing to do it with headgear on when nobody's watching. But it's a whole different other thing when you're under the lights and you're and you're fighting somebody um, in front of a crowd, in front of TV, and with no headgear, with smaller gloves. It's just a much, much different experience. So you always want to be active and, and fighting and match fit. And you know, if Hergovic, through no fault of his own, has had to, you know, wait for the, a, a fight that really isn't going to do much for him, even if he wins. Um, and I, I, I've seen Hergovic a couple times throughout the course of the last year or so at Mundo Boxing Gym, and he just looks visibly frustrated. Um, he looks upset that 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 Michael Hunter didn't want the fight, and and he really wants to just get to the get to the place where he can show his medal, where he can prove his worth. Because look, if you look at what he did as an amateur, you know he beat a lot of names in the amateurs that we that we recognize. He's beaten like Joseph Parker, and 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 he's beaten you know Tony Yoka, and he beat and he and and he beat beat, beat a lot of guys, beating a lot of fighters in the amateurs. Um, won a bronze medal in the Olympics, so he's shown his pedigree before he was pro, which is why he's so highly touted as a pro. And then as a pro, he's fought a couple, you know, veteran names, but nobody, nobody really to put him over and, and make the general consensus be that Philip Hergovic is the best guy. But I, for me personally, I think Philip Hergovic is is a future heavyweight champion. And um, that's it, man. I, I got to call a spade a spade. You know, Martin Bacoli didn't want no smoke. You know, he hasn't boxed the whole year. He's been sitting there on his ass waiting for a stimulus check from somebody of higher pay grade in the division. He hasn't boxed the whole year. The same goes for Michael Hunter, who was more content to be second fiddle to Jada Kiss and, and Styles P and Jim Jones and Cameron and them rapping and fighting a blown up cruiserweight and Mike Wilson than to do what he should have did in fighting the IBF eliminator against Philip Hergovic. And if he was really as good as he thought he th thinks he was, he would have beat Hergovic and he would position himself. But he didn't. And now he's out the IBF ranking. So, yeah, man, save the date. September the 10th, Philip Hergovic will be boxing in Austria versus uh, Marco Radonik, who's 22-0. With 22 KOs, Radonik hasn't fought anybody of note. His record is very padded. Um, but I give credit to him for doing what Michael Hunter didn't do. So in my opinion, I, 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 have, I have a higher view of this guy who I've never heard of who has a padded record than I do of Michael Hunter, who's a very talented heavyweight who should be fighting this guy because at least uh, Marco Radonik had the balls to step up and fight Philip Hergovic. As to where Mike, Michael Hunter is fighting, you know, on the undercard of Jada Kiss and Styles P in the Locks versus Dipset and their little versus battle. But um, I'm going to leave it at that. You guys, let me know what you think. Uh, September 10th, Philip Hergovic versus Marco Radonek. Uh, you know, is Philip Hergovic the most ducked and avoided heavyweight in the division? I, I think he is because when you get guys, when you get when you get to a point in your career where you get multiple guys in the top 15 that don't want to fight you, that say one thing, and then when push comes to shove, don't make the fights happen. Um, that that that's when you start becoming a guy that you can start calling a boogeyman in the division. And I I don't want to give Philip Hergovic that label yet, but if, if we get another if we get another year or so of this, he might just have to ha have that label because um he's definitely he's definitely earning it. But uh, you guys, let me know what you think. Um, is Hergovic the most ducked and avoided fighter in the world? And what do you think about his next fight? Um, who do you want to see him fight in the future? That'd be a realistic option. Let me know all that in the comments down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.